Hello, Susanna here in Barcelona. I've just been to see um, Gaudi's house and I think everyone's thinking, what's she doing this? hanging out in, in Barcelona? So, beginner's guide to bike to let um, in a busy Barcelona street with Gaudi's first house that he ever uh, designed. Um, so this reflects my experience as a beginner when I first started and this is how I did it. So I had 60 grand, I bought um, two properties with that, ooh, naughty dog. I bought two properties with, uh, with that money. The first uh, was a little one bed flat, <laughs> really naughty dog. <laughs> The first was a one bed uh, flat that I bought for 79,000 that was worth 120 at the time um, and I rented it out. So she's, she's telling the dogs not to run. <laughs> I don't think they're actually obeying her. <laughs> but she's having fun <laughs> being bossy. Good luck to her. Um, so the first was a little um, uh, one bed flat that I rented out. So some rules I want you to do. I want you to buy discounted, which means you are buying at wholesale. Do you see? I bought it at 79,000. It got revalued at 120. Why? Because I knew it was going to be worth 120 and I actually only spent about 10 grand. I'll need to look my figures up exactly for you guys, but I spent very little on it. Um, number two, I want you to do a 10% gross yield. Gross yield, and I didn't even know what gross yield was when I started in property. I used to go to the property meetings and I used to have a little piece of paper in my purse that said, and I'd, honestly, I was so terrified, I'd slip it out of my purse and go, and it was like a torn off little line sheet, and I go, gross yield equals uh, annual purchase price divided, um, sorry, uh, annual rent divided by purchase price. And I'd slip it back into my purse and I'd walk into the property event going, okay, well, at least I know something. But like, that was it, that was all I knew. So I want you to do 10% gross yield. Your estate agents will tell you 5% good, no, don't touch it with a barge pole. Most of mine are like 17% and above, you must have 10% gross yield. Otherwise, you're just not gonna get the returns. I then want you to be extremely um, mindful of the cost of your funding. Because in the early days, the excitement of the deal is just so exciting, right? Yeah, got a deal. Guys, um, the amount of money I have spent on mortgages is more than any other cost in my entire life apart from buying the darn things in the first place. So be extraordinarily mindful and then make some, some consider thoughts depending on your situation. Do you fix for five years, which is what I did in the early days because my uh, approach to risk was, oh golly, <laughs> I'm scared. Or do you, do you, do you flex um, and fix for two years? But be extremely mindful of the total cost of your mortgages and try and get as low as possible and also figure out, do you think the economy, the interest rates are going to go up and therefore fixing is a good idea or not? I mean, it's up to you. Personally, I fixed in the early days because I probably couldn't have afforded if things had gone up really quickly. And then fine, uh, fourth thing is, don't think you need to do this stuff on your own. Personally, I'm, I'm managed myself and then and now my team manage in-house. Um, but we joined the National Landlord Association and the uh, there's also the Residential Landlord Association. I understand they're very good. We just happened to join the NLA. Um, it's landlords.org. They were fantastic. They, the legal helpline alone is worth the membership fee. And I tell you what, it's like a little toddler hanging on to your mum's leg. I was hanging on to that legal helpline in the early days. I downloaded all their forms and, and we still use quite a lot of their forms. They are an absolutely fantastic organisation. So make sure you are legally compliant and become a professional member of an organisation like the Landlords Association. We use, we're members of the NLA. And then finally, speak to your council. Understand what specific things your local council requires you to do. I found council teams to be really useful. They're really pleased when landlords actually um, approach them. Talk to them, understand if there's any licenses needed or, um, and understand if they've got any accreditation programs as well. And then the only thing we actually outsource is I don't get involved in the emotional side of evictions. I find it difficult. I find it upsetting. I find myself getting cross. Uh, you know, I have a, a multitude of emotions, whereas actually what we're mainly doing is just finishing a contract with somebody. So it's the one thing we outsource and we actually find that Landlord Action, run by Paul Champlina, Champlina, is very good. And for me, it's worth the money outsourcing. So there you go. Buy discounted, 10% yield, um, join a professional organisation like National Landlord Association, um, talk to your local council, outsource the difficult stuff, um, but for me it's quite emotionally difficult, and, and waste the energy, you know, drains your energy like evictions to a professional organisation. And then finally, don't accept the norm. Don't accept the norm. Don't accept the norm. I'm just going to say that one more time. Don't accept the norm. So, go look at your competition. It's blooming awful. Um, the landlord that thinks a stripy mattress with a crappy photo um, stuck on an advert and then tenants will come in droves 
is a landlord that is not going to be a major competitor. Do not be one of those guys. We take two to three days to make beautiful photos. We pay 200 quid for a professional photographer. Um, typically, they need to be landscape, not portrait. Um, and then we scrape phone numbers from any organizer, any advertising area organization that allows tenants to put their phone numbers down. We proactively contact tenants like crazy. We proactively arrange viewings, and our, as a result, our, our viewing rate is super. Low, uh, sorry, our void rate is super low. And then last bit, actually, guys, I got so much I could tell you about this, but look at the playlist is don't accept the norm of people not paying you. We have very, very clear debt management processes and as a result, we have an extraordinary record on not having debt. So basically, we communicate very, very frequently and the Landlord Association will tell you every three days and we make it extraordinarily clear that if tenants have not paid by day 10, then we'll start the um, small claims court. Uh, proceedings, which only costs you know 30 to 60 quid depending on how much they owe you. Typically we'll send a screenshot first so to show them that we're serious and typically they'll pay at that point. So don't accept excuses, you're, you're simply in a contract with somebody, you're paying, giving a house, um, uh, they're um, paying the rent. And also have a repair, sorry, I know I've got loads for you, um, have a repair sheet uh, because uh, we make sure, well, we try to make sure that all repairs are sorted very, very quickly. And uh, for us, we set 10% aside for our repairs, and we know that that's our budget, so we don't get worried when we have to spend it. There you go, Beginner's Guide to Buy to Let. Good luck, subscribe to our videos, and go over to our YouTube channel, uh, my, my um, website, which is thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk. Right? I'm off for coffee. Bye!